were only 27 true Israelites on the Sanhedrin of 400. All the rest were Jews. They had invaded the place and took it over. And they've done it again today. Well, he says here, his Pharisees said to him, Well, you bear record of yourself, and your record's not true. And Jesus answered, Says, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know from where I came and where I go. But you cannot tell from where I came or where I go. You judge after the flesh. Flesh. I judge no man. And yet if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. Isn't that bad English? I am the Father that sent me. He was telling him who he was. I am the Father, he said. Well, it is written in your law, he says, that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bears witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. Well, then the Jews said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered. He says, You neither know me nor my father. Because if you had known me, you would have known the father also. You see, again, he was saying, He and the father are the same. If they'd have known Jim, Jesus, they'd have known the father. They'd have known God of Israel, the God of Israel. But he says they don't know him. These words spoke Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. No man laid hands on him, for his hour wasn't come. Well, then Jesus said to them, He's talking to the Jews here. He says, I'll go my way, and you'll seek me, and you'll die in your sins, because where I go, you can't come. Where was Jesus going to go? Back to the celestial plains from whence he came when he took a flesh body on himself in the earth, which Almighty God can do easily, can't he? But he says the Jews can't go there. That's why in 3 John you'll read, none can go to heaven but those who came from there. It says, even the Son of Man, though it said, even the seed of Adam. The seed of Adam came from heaven. You've been there already. What are you trying to get back for? Why don't you stay here and do the job he put you here for? Well, then the Jews said, will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, we can't go. Does he sound like God's chosen people? Hmm. Boy, these preachers make me go like that. Say that. Well, he said to them, you're from beneath. I am from above. You're of this world order. I'm not of this world order. I said, therefore, to you that you'll die in your sins, because if you believe not that I am he, you'll die in your sin. If they believe not that I am he, who? Who's he talking about? Well, they said to him, who are you? Jesus said the same that I told you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I've heard of him. They uh, didn't understand that he spoke of the Father. You see, they didn't understand that when he said, if you don't believe that I am he, if you don't believe that I am the Father or Almighty God, you're nuts. Well, Moses gave you circumcision, he says. Well, what's that circumcision? Purification and holiness of the foreskin of the heart. That's what it is, a foreskin of the heart. And if a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry with me because I've made a man every whit whole on this Sabbath day? Jesus cured him and made him heal. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Well, then some of the Jews said, is not, or then some of them of Jerusalem, of course, they were true Israelites, a few of them, they said, is not this he who they want to kill? In other words, is not this the one the Jews want to kill? But lo, he speaks boldly. They don't say anything to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? See, there were some people who knew. Howbeit we know this man from where he is, but when the Christ comes, no man knows where he is. Then Jesus cried in the temple as he taught. He says, you both know me, and you know from where I am. I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom you know not. But I know him, for I am from him. Talking about the Father. Then they sought to take him. No one laid hands on him because his hour wasn't yet come. You see, they couldn't do anything to Jesus. He's Almighty God. And many of the people believed on him. Many of what people? True Israelites? Sure. And they said, when Christ comes, will he do more miracles than these which this man has already done? The Pharisees then heard these people and that they murmured such things concerning Jesus. 
And the Pharisees and the chief priests of the Jews sent officers to take him. Well, then Jesus said to them, I'm a little while with you, and then I'm going to go to him that sent me. In other words, I'm going to go back and be the father. You'll seek me and you'll not find me, because where I am, you cannot come. This to the Jews. Well, then the Jews said amongst themselves, where will he go? So we'll not find it. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? No, the word Gentiles wasn't in this text at all. It was never in the Bible. The translators put it in there. The word in Hebrew was goy, which meant the Israelite people. And the word Athene was here in the New Testament in Greek, which means the nations, and the nations of Abraham's descendants were the tribes of Israel. So they were saying, these Jews saying, would he go to the nations of the tribes of Israel? Well, they knew they weren't. All right, let's see what this says now. <clears throat> what manner of saying is this, that he said, you'll seek me and not find me. And where I am, you can't, we can't come. These Jews can't go. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried and he said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Well, I'm back over here in seven. I see a Bible slips on me every once in a while. So, I was in John eight, right? That was good though, wasn't it? <laughs> Nothing wrong with me, I told you before. There's a little breeze back here and it's hot. Well, in John 8, 12 to 59, we'll go back. Then Jesus spoke to them, said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Then the Pharisees, which I told you about, they said, you bear record of yourself and your record's not true. And Jesus went on and tell them where I come. Where, uh, you can't tell from where I come or where I go. You judge after the flesh. He was telling them who he was. Now he says, the Jews said to him, where is your father? And he said, you neither know me nor my father. We've covered that. Now, Jesus spoke these words in the temple as a treasury as he taught in the temple. Well, Jesus said again, I'll go my way and you'll seek me and you'll die in your sins because where I go, you can't come. Then the Jews said, well, will he kill himself? Because he said, where he's going, we can't go. And he said to them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world order. I am not of this world order. I said, therefore, to you that you will die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you will die. And I think I covered that. They didn't understand that he spoke of the Father. Then Jesus said, when you have lifted up, the, it says, the Son of Man. No, the seed of Adam. Then you'll know that I am he. In other words, after I'm crucified, you'll know I'm God. I'm not going to let you know until then. And that I do nothing of myself. He that sent me... All right, as he spoke these words, many Judeans or true Israelites believed on him. You see, if you read that the Jews believed on him there, then you're denying his word. Because Jesus said of the Jews, they'd never believe. He said of the Jews, they hate me and they hate you. If one were to rise from the dead, they'll not believe. Those are the words of Jesus Christ about the Jews. So this couldn't be the Jews believing on him, could it? If it were, he'd be a liar, wouldn't he? And he's not. So you have to put this Bible together. All right. <clears throat> then Jesus said to those Jews, it says Jews which believed on him. Well, you know no Jews believed on him. He said they wouldn't. And the word you look in there was Judeans. The translators put the word Jew for Judeans. And then read it properly. Then said Jesus to those Judeans, and no Jew was a Judean, you see, which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Here's a very important thing. Listen to what the Jews say right after Jesus said that. Jesus answered them. And verily I say to you, whosoever commits sin is a servant of sin. And you know, when the Jews had said in another verse here, when he said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, this next verse is very important. The Jews then answered him. They said, we're Abraham's seed, the word seed's descendants, and we're never in bondage to any man. How do you say we'll be made free? Now, just think a minute. The Jews said they'd never been in bondage to any man. At that time, when Jesus made this statement, the Israelites of your Bible had been in bondage three times. In Egypt, to Sennacherib, and in Babylon. But the Jews stood there and said they'd never been in bondage. Who are they kidding? Could they be the people who were in bondage in Egypt then? 
Uh-huh. Could they be the Israelites who were in bondage to Sennacherib and Babylon? Uh-huh. They'd never been in bondage, you see. They said so. They denied they were the Israelites right then and there. But Jesus said, oh, uh, whoever commits sin is a servant of sin, and the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides, or the seed abides forever. Now, if the son, therefore, will make you free, you will be free indeed. Now, verse 37 of John 8 is the one you all want to make a note on. It confuses all the preachers. All the preachers get confused on that one. Jesus is speaking to the Jews, and in the English text of the King James Version, Jesus says to them, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Then it goes on, he says, I speak that which I have seen with my father. Well, he couldn't say that because the possessive pronoun my isn't even in the Hebrew language. It had to be put in there from the Greek translation. There was never a word my in the language. And the word was thee, I speak that which I have seen with the father. And he says to the Jews, you do that which you have seen with your father. Then they answered him. They said, Abraham's our father. And Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But you seek to kill me. Abraham wouldn't do this. Oh, uh-huh. if you were. That contradicts verse 37. You know the truth doesn't contradict itself, does it? So I said, wait a minute. Something's wrong here. One verse says one thing and the other contradicts it. So one of those has to be wrong. So I went back and checked the original Hebrew text. And I find that it didn't say, he didn't say, I know you're Abraham's seed in verse 37. They left two words out of that verse when they translated it. The two words you say. And reading it correctly, he says to the Jews, I know that you say you're Abraham's seed. Sure, they said it. They claimed it and they claim it today, don't they? But what did he say to them? If you were Abraham's children, you would know me or you'd do the works of Abraham. But you seek to kill me. You do the deeds of your father. Oh, the Jews said, we're not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Oh, and the Jews said there were the children of God, that God was their father. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. I didn't come of myself. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you cannot hear my words. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Now, who murdered Abel? Cain? Oh, he abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father. Can somebody turn that thing off up there? I'm going to hell here quick. This thing is burning me out. Whew. Anybody else warm? Maybe we got a Jew caretaker at this place. Trying to heat me out, Carl, not you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, he says, you're of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you'll do. Now, how can these preachers say that the Jews are God's chosen people? Well, right here in black and white, Jesus Christ said they're the children of the devil. And their father's works will they do? Because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. Which of you convinces me of sin? If I tell you the truth, why don't you believe me, he says. He that is of God hears God's words, and he says to the Jews, You therefore hear them not because you're not of God. Well, just a minute. Rabbi Billy Graham keeps saying that the Jews are God's chosen people and that Jesus Christ is a Jew. Jesus Christ said the Jews are the children of the devil. Is Rabbi Graham saying that Jesus Christ is an offspring of Satan? You bet he is. And he's a liar, too. I'd like to get some of those guys in the back alley one night. Really. I'm serious. I knocked their teeth out so they couldn't, they go blue, 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 blue the next time they try to preach. Because that's all they're worth. They're doing that now. Well, you say that's evil? No, that isn't evil. That's good. They should get their teeth knocked out. Because they're not doing right. And we're God's battle axe and weapons of war. We should fight for him. So he says, you know not of God. Then the Jews said, well, say not, well, you are a Samaritan and you have a devil. And Jesus answered. He said, I have not a devil, but I honor the Father. And you do dishonor me. I don't seek my own glory. There is one that seeks and judges. I say unto you, if a man keeps my saying, he shall never see death. Well, then the Jews said, now we know that you have a devil. Abraham's dead, and the prophets are dead. And you say that if a man keeps my saying, he'll never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who do you make yourself? They said to him. And Jesus answered and said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It's the Father that honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him. 
But I know him. And if I should say that I don't know him, I'd be a liar like you. But I know him and keep his saying. Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You're not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. See, he was before Abraham, of course, he's Almighty God. And then if these Jews say that Abraham was a Jew, the first Jew, and Jesus said, I was before Abraham. How could that be? Abraham couldn't be a first Jew even, could he? Well, then they took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, went through the midst of them and passed by. You see, he could become invisible just like that. And there's many instances of the time. So now we're going to conclude with chapter seven, uh, 12 of Revelations. Now I told you I took you from Genesis back into the New Testament and back to the Old Testament. All right, now in the book of Revelations, the chronology of this chapter 12 is before Adam and Eve. Long before the arrival of, on your, of your race, in verse 7 it starts, there was a war in heaven, it says. It didn't say here on this earth, it says the war was in heaven or the celestial plane. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Who's the dragon? And his angel, it says. The dragon had some angels and prevailed not. Who? The dragon. See, this English is terrible. They'd flunk an English class, these translators. <clears throat> The dragon lost the battle, in other words. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Now you see who the serpent is again? That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives this whole world, he was cast into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Can you visualize the space battle where Satan and his angels, or his army, his hosts, were fighting the archangel Michael? And the sons of God? If you can't, then this is false. But there are records of it in the Sumerian dynasty histories of Asia where they witnessed it 75,000 years ago. And they refer to the axemen and swordsmen of Satan's host as the black kinky-haired ones in the history of the Sumerian dynasty. And the secrets of Enoch refer to them as the dark curly-haired ones. Now, can you visualize Satan rebelling against God, fighting against your race in a war in the heavens? And calling out the blacks and saying, come on, boys, join my army. We're going to go out and kill Whitey, and I'm going to put you all in Cadillacs and put you on welfare. You think that didn't happen? It sure did. And it's happened again today, hasn't it? Who organizes and finances the NAACP? Who organizes and finances the Congress of Racial Equality? Who is all in back of mongrelizing and mixing the blacks with a white race? The Jew, the serpent seed but Christ identified as the children of the devil. Now you know there's a racial problem here, don't you? That old serpent called the devil, which deceives this whole world, he was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, you don't believe that Sumerian dynasty history. Would you believe Robert Rourke, a syndicated columnist who wrote for 25 years from Africa, and his article was in the newspapers every day, and he wrote a book, something of value, you can go get it, and in his writings he tells how he learned the language of the voodoo priests of Africa, and he says that they're praying to the great white God to take them off the planet Earth and take them back to the planets from which Satan seduced them when he brought them here. They're not happy on this planet and they want to go back. Robert Rourke tells you that in his book, Something of Value, and in his writings. And he knows their language. Well, isn't that interesting? They know it. Well, <clears throat> I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation. No, the word was Yahshua. In Hebrew means the physical manifestation of Yahweh, which in the English word name is Jesus. And strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. See, he was accusing our brethren, our race, in the heavens. Satan was doing it there and he's doing it here. Which accused them before our God day and night. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. What's this blood of the blood lamb business mean? Do you know that your ancestors, when they were in Egypt in the book of Exodus, were told on the tenth day of the month Nisan to select a lamb for the slaughter? They were not to kill the lamb until the 14th day of the month, Nisan, at the hour of the slaughter of the lamb. And one more condition, they were not to break one bone of the lamb. Those were the Israelites in Egypt. Were they Jews? No. They were your anglo saxon Celtic, Germanic, Lombard peoples of the day. They were your ancestors. And what did that symbolize? It symbolized the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. On the 10th day of the month, Nisan, Christ was selected for crucifixion by the Jews. 
He was crucified on the 14th day of the month Nisan at the hour of the slaughter of the lamb. And he was, two were crucified with him and their bones were broken. Not one bone of Jesus Christ was broken. In order to fulfill the scriptures, of course, of his people Israel. And when John the Baptist saw him coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. And what does Revelation say? It was they were overcome. Satan was overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Christ's blood that was shed for us. Yes. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives to the death. In other words, they weren't afraid of death. Your Anglo-Saxon ancestors as warriors weren't afraid of death. And they are today. Read the history of the Viking kings. You'll find out. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down to them, having great wrath, because he knows he has a short time. You see, when they talk about the end of the world, the end of the world, no, it's the end of the cosmos, the world order. It's the end of Satan's time, folks. The end of Satan's time is coming, and he knows it. God said, I'm going to put a hook in his jaw and make him move before his time. Otherwise, my elect would be destroyed. And God's Israel are his elect, and we Christians are those Israelites. As the book of Acts says, that Christ's disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Well, what were they called before they were called Christians then? Israelites. You're the Israelites of this book. You're God's children, you who are now known as Christians. Well, he says, when the dragon saw that he was cast out to the earth, that's Satan, he persecuted the woman which brought forth a man-child. What was the woman which brought forth a man-child? A race that brought Christ into the earth. You're a race. I said a dirty word again, didn't I? And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she's nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. What do these two wings of the eagle mean? They're symbolic too. There are two nations of Israel that have the eagle's wings as their symbol. Do you know who they are? The United States of America, of course, right. Manasseh, right? What's the other one? The royal tribe of the house of Israel. The one that the king line from all the nations would come from. And that has called that great symbol the black eagle, and that's Germany. And the Germany and the Germanic peoples have that black eagle and the great eagle that even Hitler had. And they are a race, the tribe of Judah, the royal tribe of the house of Israel. Now you know why the Jews hated the Germans, don't you? Now you know why the Jews wanted to use the United States and Britain and all of our nation and power to destroy Germany. nation of Europe, of Western Europe, that would stop Jew communism, which took over the Soviet Union or killed all the Russians. And Tsar Nicholas II of Russia was a Germanic stock too, and so was his wife a German. And they were an, an assassinated by these Jews who went over there, financed by the, the whole Bolshevik revolution of, of Russia, financed by the Rothschilds and the Warburgs and the Kunlov Company and the Lehman Brothers right out of New York. Military intelligence records prove it that the Jews financed communism all over the world and backed the Bolshevik Revolution. And if anybody can't see it, all you have to do is go and look in a dictionary and look up the word Bolshevik. Look it up. There it is. Well, here you're going right as a result of the book of Revelations. It told you that would happen. And he says, the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. They might carry away it was the flood of Noah's day. Well, they tell you the flood covered the whole earth. No, it didn't. It covered that land or that country where Noah was. The Hebrew word erat is in the Hebrew text. And the Arat means that country or that land. But the translators put the word face of the earth. That's what they did in the third chapter of Genesis there, where I read that they said Cain was put off the face of the earth. The Hebrew word Arat was there. It means that land or that country. Properly translated, Cain was put out of that land or that country and out in the land of Nod. And in the days of the flood of Noah's day, it said the flood covered that country where Noah was. Of course it did, because Egypt and the pyramid was built before that time. And there's not a flood mark on the pyramid in Egypt. And the records of the flood were carried down there by survivors. So you see, the, the preachers that tell you the flood covered the whole earth are nuts. They just don't know their Bible. Well, he says that tells about that flood. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. And then the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood. Well, that was swallowed up. Now, listen to this. And we'll conclude our sermon with this. The dragon, who was the dragon? That old serpent called the devil? So the devil's the serpent, the serpent beguiled Eve, and Cain was an offspring of that wicked one, and that wicked one was the devil. The devil or dragon was angry with the woman. Satan hates your race. 
The woman is your race, Israel. Caucasian, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Germanic, Lombard. And he went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Satan made war with the descendants of Israel. Which do what? Listen to this. Satan's at war with those of our race who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Satan hates you. And he's at war with you as soon as you stand up for Jesus Christ. That's what happens. And as soon as you stand up for your race, you'll find all the satanic forces here attacking you, hitting you from all, calling you all kinds of dirty names, calling you all kinds of smear names and all of that. Why? Because they are the hate mongers. They hate your God. They hate your race. And they're blatantly telling you that they're going to wipe you out. But I have news for them. Whitey's going to wake up. God's people are going to have their blindness taken off. And they're going to understand that they're going to have to cleanse this land. Well, we want your help to do this. We'll take your offering today, and we want you to know when we take your offering that there is no paid salary of, to anybody, including me. There never has been, and there won't be. All of this Jew Federal Reserve notes that you give us is put to work. It's put to work to destroy the enemies of Jesus Christ and to spread this gospel of truth across this land. And, folks, it's spreading. It's literally exploding across this land. People are now accepting it where a few years ago they wouldn't have anything to do with it. They said, you're a religious nut. You're crazy. Now they're looking. Of course, a few of them might have to get that big black foot in their mouth, whether it be San Francisco and Los Angeles or where, in order to wake them up. But identity people won't do that because you'll be alert. So we want your help. We don't get a lot of money. We don't operate like Rabbi Hargis, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars putting singing kids on a television boob tube and telling you, come on, join us on these trips to the state of Israel or the Holy Land and spending all your money with that Jew El Al Airlines and the, the, the Jew travel agents and all that. No, every nickel you put into this goes out to destroy the enemies of Christ and to build an army of Christ's kingdom here. And we're building an army and don't think we aren't. Because Christ's people, this white man, when he gets up, he's going to fight. Because this Bible says we're God's battle axe and weapons of war. We're here to do that. We're not here to make peace with that devil. We're not going to make peace with him. We're going to destroy him and occupy until Christ comes. And he said in that day they'll be crying, peace, peace. You know, they're all telling you peace. Well, when they say you just go say peace on you too to them and wave your hand at them, see. You just tell them we're not here to make peace with you. We're going to wipe you out. And you're going to do it. So we want your help. Our Heavenly Father, Jesus, we ask thy blessings upon this offering. And bless those who give it and multiply it to meet their own personal needs. And we ask this in thy name, Jesus Christ. And we've just had a surprise. Jack and Frederick, Jack, come on up from Arkansas. They've come all the way from Arkansas, and here they are. Come on up, Jack. I want you to say a word. <laughs> now, don't let Jack's beard fool you. He's not a hippie. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, say a word to you, folks. Well, you, you caught me off guard, but I'm really thrilled to be here and to see how you're growing and and holding fast. Uh, I'm just, well, I can't explain myself. I can't get myself together here, but uh, uh, I met Bill many years ago, and he was the one that brought me to Christ. I mean, he's God's servant and prophet. Corinthians 12 tells you this is one of the greatest gifts, is to be a prophet. If you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, that means a teacher. Well, I was really lost. I had lost my first wife and family. I was married to a half-breed Indian woman. And I had some bastard kids by her. I married outside of my race. I committed a terrible sin. Well, I won't go into all that, but uh, I was using drugs as an escape. I was real super hippie. You know, at one time I had hair down to here and uh, sandals and a whole earthy, funky bit, as they say, you know. But I tell you what, when I met Colonel Gale, as I like to call him, I said, man, I said, there's a real man. He's not one of these insipid preachers, because I used to go to all kind of churches. I call most of them whorehouses. They're the daughters of the great whore, 
that it's telling you about in the Bible. But I tell you what, it changed my whole life. And I did what Acts 2 and 38 says. I didn't get my head massaged, and he didn't save me. He knew Christ did that. But Acts 2 38 says, repent. I did. I repented of what I did. I've done some pretty terrible things. You see, but Christ wants people like us because we've got nothing to brag about but him. Well, I repented, and I was baptized, and I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. In other words, I was able to receive this truth, not going off this Shandai hickey-licky stuff that they do in church. I went to a church one time and asked me to get up and speak, you know, and a bunch of babblers and silly fools in there. And uh, they said, would you get up and speak, brother? And I did. And this guy said, well, glory, Shandai. And he went into an emotional fit, and I went, well, hickey-licky. And I tell you what, those people just horrified because Christ said the truth that make you free. But I want to tell you what, there is a devil, and it's not just all tax. Because you get a good white man and brainwash him, and he can be twofold a child of hell if these devils are. Now, I tell you what, I've had my own family since I've known Jesus Christ turn on me. I just had a visit from the FBI, the Secret Service, and some other outfit. I don't remember their name. But, you know, they were white men they sent out to me. One guy said he was a Baptist. And I said, well, it's too bad you're not a Christian. You know, and uh, he asked me, they asked me if they felt that I was uh, superior to any other race. I said, uh, well, I said, after I found out I was a Hebrew and an Israelite, well, you ought to see their face. They, they were afraid to offend me. They thought I was a kite then. You think? <laughs> If they had Christ instead of a dead Hitler, what we could do, you know. Because it takes a lot of guts to be a Nazi, you know. He was a Nazi from Arizona and an Odinist. But they're both a couple of yellow traitors. I don't even know them. I don't even know my daughter. They called, how low can you get when you call the FBI on you? family, right? I wouldn't even do that to a nigger. You know that? I wouldn't call the FBI on them. But I tell you what, I said a prayer for them. God says, vengeance is mine. And I pray, I say, Almighty Yahweh, let them live through the next five years. I want them to live. I don't want them to die. I don't wish them any harm. I just want them to live because they have turned on me. They've turned on the message. They knew this message. But they're sold out pretty cheap. They're sold out for carnality and so forth. Because uh, I tell you, we really have some perilous times. In Oklahoma, they plowed up, what is it, a million and 25,000 acres this year's wheat crop. See, God's going to get these people on their knees. They won't listen to you, but, boy, they're going to listen real soon. And uh, uh, my brother Houston, well, we're all brothers. We Israelites, but we have this big ranch back in Arkansas, and we've tried to do pretty much what Colonel Gale's doing. But I tell you what, the worst enemies are those of your own household trying to get people to work with you. They won't cooperate. And have people call the FBI on you and all this and that. But I tell you what, back there last year, baling twine was $7 for a big roll, 9,000 feet, I think, in a roll. This year, if you could get it, it's $25 a roll. There's no fertilizer. Now, it's pretty hard to grow cows without food. We gave our wheat crops and et to China and Russia and gave it to them. We haven't been paid yet. We just take notes on it. What a farce. But anyway, I tell you what, there, there's a real famine in the land, and, and I'm just so thrilled that everything's getting worse. And I pray that it does. Because Jesus Christ, he said, when all this comes to pass, he said, look up and rejoice because your redemption draws nigh. Are they going to scare you when you know this message? They tell you you're going to kill you. I had a guy in Florida was going to kill me for my money. I met this guy going into the store, and I got to preach to he and his wife, because, see, they could dig on what I was saying, because I looked like a right-on brother. You see? Now, they're not going to listen to you square cats that got short haircuts and all this mess. But God said, I'll use the foolish things of this earth in order to confound the wise. Isn't that what he said? Paul said, I must become all things to all men that I might win the minds of men. That's how 
he reached me because I said he was a man. Because uh, I saw him knock a brother flat one day. He was talking about fist fighting. This guy thought I'm a karate expert. And I, we were all single. And I saw him deck him and knocked him clear across the room into the wall. And he went down. And he said, just try that again. So he knocked him down again. Him being a Scotsman, after he dented up his wall heater, he said, we got to stop this. It's kind of, kind of a cheapskate, you know what I mean? But I said, now that's the kind of man. But anyway, make a longer story shorter. I said, this guy said, hey, man. I said, what do you do for a living? He said, I just come over here to knock over this store. I said, what? He said, I'm a shoplifter. But he and his wife, they were redheads. He was a big Polish fellow and had four beautiful little kids. Well, anyway... And they were living in their car and so forth. So we took him to a motel room, this other brother and I. And uh, he says, well, if I accept this message you're telling me and believe that Christ is God and all this, and I read this, I get home without stealing. And I said, well, that's easy. You know, he pulled out a pistol. And he said, hey, sucker, what if I just blow you away and take what you got? What would you do? I said, I would praise God. That I got an opportunity to die in his name on my lips before I go. Because I said, you see, I can't die. I just step back to the celestial from whence I came. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We would like to announce that the national headquarters of the Ministry of Christ Church is located at 4241 Usona Road. U-S-O-N-A. Usona Road. Mariposa, California. M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A. Mariposa, California, zip code 95338. You may write to that address and request an order form for cassette tape sermons of the ministers of this church.